Okay, let's just walk through a couple of division problems and we'll just sort of encounter things along the way and maybe learn little bits and pieces, whatever we run into. So here I have a one digit divisor into a bigger number. The first step is I'm going to divide 5 into some part of this. I'm going to work my way across here. So I'm not going to explain why everything works. I'm just going to show you how to do it at this stage. Okay. So what we do is we start with the 3. Will 5 go into 3? And the answer is no. 5 is already too big. There are no 5s that you can fit into a 3. You have to have something here bigger than the 5. So I'll have to go to another digit. So how about the 2? 5 will go into 32. And so we're going to start our answer right here. Since that's the smallest part of the problem, where 5 will actually go into it, some whole number of times. Okay? Next step. How many times will 5 go into 32? The way to estimate that is to just round this off and say, well, 32 is sort of like 30. It's a little more than 30. And I know that 5 times 6 is 30. So 6 times 5 would be 30. And then I go 6 times 5. And I want to say, how far off was my guess? 6 times 5 is 30. Okay? And then I subtract to see how far off my guess was. So 0 from 2 is 2, and I don't have to go any further. Now, the next step is very important. That is to compare. Make sure that this number comes out smaller than the divisor. If this number is not smaller than the divisor, we got the wrong number up here. Let's see how that works. Let's back off and do it wrong so that we'll recognize what it looks like when we do it wrong. What if I say 5 into 32? Well, let's say 5 times. So then you say 5 times 5 is 25. How far off are we? So we subtract 5 and something makes, has to end in a 2. So 5 and 7 makes 12. And when I subtract, I carry to the bottom. Uh, Watch my subtraction video to make sure you know how to do that. You're adding upside down. You don't have to borrow. You, you carry to the bottom. So you say 5 plus 7 is 12. Carry the 1. Well, this is now a 3. And 3 and 0 makes 3. So that's it. But notice the 7 is too big. That's bigger than the 5. So we didn't put a big enough number up here. We didn't get as close as possible uh, to the maximum value. And so we have to go back and change it. So if you ever get a situation like that, you have to go back and change it and then try again. So 5 was too small. 6 times 5 is 30. 7 times 5 is 35. That's too big. So it has to be 6. 6 times 5 is 30. Subtract, I get 2. I don't always put the minus sign there, but you probably ought to while you're learning this. And so we have a 2. Okay? So, bring down the next digit, and we'll do it again. This is 5 into 21. 5 times what is close to 21? Well, round that off to 20. 5 times 4 is 20. That looks like it's a probably a pretty good guess. So, 4 times 5 is 20. And if I subtract, I get 1. Okay? 1 is smaller than 5. Make sure you compare. Bring down the next digit. How many times does 5 go into 14? Well, 3 times 5 is 15. That's too big. So this has to be a 2. 2 times 5 is 10. Then you go. 2 times 5 is 10. How far off am I? So I subtract. And the answer is 4. Make sure the 4 is smaller than the 5, which it is. Bring down the 0. 5 into 40. Well, 5 times 8 is 40. 5 times 8 is 40, subtract, and I get 0. It went evenly. The answer is 6, 4, 2, 8. Okay? So, that's how you do single digit into however big a number you have. If it's a bigger number, you just keep doing it more times, and that's it. Okay? So, a whole number into this. If it doesn't come out even, you have your options. You can put a remainder, if that's appropriate. If you need a whole number with a remainder type of answer. Or you can take your final remainder and put it over the divisor as a fraction. Or 
you can uh, put a decimal point and put one or more zeros and keep going a few more places. You might eventually have to round off the answer, but uh, there's different ways to handle that. So those are three different options, and it depends on the kind of problem and uh, the kind of answer you're looking for. I'm not doing a lot of practice here. I'm just giving you a demonstration problem, uh, which you can use to compare to whatever kind of problem you're doing. Okay, I use the same number inside. No reason to change that. This time I use a two-digit divisor. Okay, here we start the same way. I'm trying to divide 25 into this number. And I start by breaking it up. What's the smallest part of this that's bigger than 25? Or equal to 25. Well here is 32 and 25 will go into 32 one time. So that's our first number. The first answer is going to go right there and uh, we're going to put a 1 there. Then I say 1 times 25 is 25. Then I subtract to see how far off I am. So 5 and what has to be a 12. So 5 and 7 is 12 carry the 1. So this is a 3 3 from 3 is 0. 7 is smaller than 25, so we're good. Bring down the next digit. Okay, how many times does 25 go into 71? Okay, let's uh, see how we can figure this out. You can probably figure 3 times 25 is 75 because you know how to deal with quarters and money and things like that. And so 3 would be a little bit too big, so that's going to be a 2 and so forth. But if you don't have a simple situation like that, you might want to say, how would I estimate how many times this will go into that? So the way to do it, or a way to do it, to estimate, we're going to guess, and we might be wrong, but I have to change our answer. Uh, take the 25 and just uh, throw away a digit and just consider it to be a 2. And then here, throw away a digit and consider it to be a 7. How many times does 2 go into 7? Well, 2 times 3 is 6, so you might say 3. I'm just going to put that on the side just for a minute. So if you rounded this off to a 20 and this off to a 70, and then throw away the zeros, it's like 2 into 7, or just sort of cover up the last digit and say how many times does 2 go into 7, we came up with 3. But this is in between. 20 and 30. 25 is bigger than 20 and smaller than 30. So what if that were a 3 instead of a 2? How many times would 3 go into 7? Well, 3 times 2 is 6. It looks like it would go 2 times. So the answer is somewhere between 2 and 3, it looks like. So 2 is a better guess. So let's try that. I'm going to put the 2 there. And notice this does involve some estimating. So 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 2 is 4, and 1 is 5. So this is smaller than that, so we can subtract. I get a 1, I get a 2. Then you compare 21, 25. Yep, we have a number that's smaller than our divisor, so we're OK. Time to bring down the next digit. 25 into 214. OK, same idea. This is between 20 and 30. So let's uh, throw away the 5 and just consider it as a 2, and throw away one digit here, so consider this to be a 21. How many times would 2 go into 21? Well, 2 goes into 21 about 10 times, but you know that can't be a 10, because it has to be a single digit. So the closest uh, possibility might be 9. So if we treat that like a 2 and treat this like a 21, in other words, throw away the last digit, then we would get a 9. Or, what if that's a 3? How many times, if those of I round this up, like a 30, then throw away a digit, and that would be like a 3? How many times would 3 go into this? Well, 3 into 21 would be 7. 3 times 7 is 21. Okay, so it looks like we're somewhere in between 7 and 9, so why don't we try 8? That's probably a better guess. So if I treat 25 as though it's a 20, I'm using too small a number. If I treat it like it's a 30, it's too big a number. And I can do both of those and then uh, get two estimates and then sort of guess around. So 25 is pretty close to halfway in between. It's probably an 8, but we might be off. Let's see. Let's multiply it out. 5 times 8 is 40. 
So you say 5 times 8 is 40. Put down the 0, carry the 4. 2 times 8 is 16, plus 4 is 20. Look at that. we got a number that's smaller than 214. And when I subtract, I get 14. Subtract here, here, and that's it. Okay? This is smaller than 25, so we guessed correctly. So 8 is the correct answer. What next? Let's bring down the 0. 25 into 140. If I round this down to 20 and throw away the 0 and then throw away the 0 here, 2 into 14 would be 7. So let's put that on the side here. But if I round this up to 30 instead of down to 20, that would be a 3. 3 into 14, well, 3 times 4 is 12. This looks like it would be a 4. So 4, 5, 6, 7. So either a 5 or a 6. And let's try 5. So 5 times 5 is 25. And 5 times 2 is 10. And 2 is 12. That will subtract. Okay. 5 and 5 is 10. Carry the 1. 3 and 1 is 4. 15. Now compare. 15 is smaller than 25. So um, we're done if we are going to stop with the whole number. So one solution would be 1, 2, 8, 5 with a remainder of 15. Another solution would be 1, 2, 8, 5 and 15, 20 fifths. And the 15 and 25 would reduce. So that would be 1, 2, 8, 5. And then 5 goes into 15 three times. 5 goes into 25 five times. So that would be another solution. So 1,285 and three-fifths. Here's the first solution. And the other approach would be add a decimal here and here, and add a zero or a couple zeros or whatever, and keep going. Okay? So let's bring down another zero. And if I go 25 and 150, now this you should be able to just work out, because that is a special number. That's four of these makes 100, and two more of these would be 50, so it's going to be 6. So that's a, if you don't have to estimate, if you have a good reason to think it's a certain number, just go for it. You could go, you could do the same estimation trick again if you needed to, but uh, in this case it was pretty straightforward. So 6 times 5 is 30, uh, carry the 3, 6 times 2 is 12, and 3 is 15, comes out even. So the other answer is 1285.6. Okay, so three different formats for the solution depending on uh, your needs. Okay. Okay, let's do one more example where we don't have such a nice number out front and see uh, what kind of trouble we run into and how we deal with it. Okay. And again, I'm just working through this and narrating my thinking as we go. Division like this requires estimating, and it takes little tricks, but I'll show you a few tricks as we go. Okay, the first step is to find the smallest number here that's bigger than 37. 3 doesn't do it. 32 is still a bit, a bit too small. So I have to go all the way to 321, and the first digit of the answer is going to go there. It's important to figure that out. This will be three digits and then whatever decimal or fraction or remainder is beyond that. So, notice that 37 is a lot closer to 40 than it is to 30. So, if we just estimate using this as though that's a 40, that will probably uh, be pretty good for us, okay? All right, uh, 320. If I treat this like a 40 and throw away the last digit, it's a 4. Throw away the last digit here, it's a 32. 4 times 8 is 32, so I can put an 8 here as our first guess, which we might have to revise. 7 times 8 is 56. 3 times 8 is 24, and 5 is 29. And there you go. Subtract. How far off are we? 6 and 5 is 11. Carry the 1 to the bottom. 10 and 2 makes 12. Carry the 1 to the bottom. That's a 3. That comes out zero. So look at that. You have to compare the remainder with the divisor. This is smaller than that, so we got the right number up there. Okay? 
bring down the next digit. How many times will this go into that? Well, again, treat this like a 40, throw away the zero, so that's a four. Throw away the digit here, and it's like a 25. Um, six times four is 24, so let's try a six. Okay, six times seven is 42. Uh, three times six is 18, and four is 22. Okay. Uh, subtract 2 from 4 is 2, 2 from 5 is 3, and that goes okay. 32 is less than 37, so we're okay. So, ready to bring down the next digit. Again, treat that like a 4 or a 40, and I throw away the digit and I get a 4. Throw away the digit, I have 32. 4 times, well this looks a lot like what we had up here, and notice that, so 320, 321, and the 8, we already know what 8 times 37 is. It's 296. So if that looks like that would go under there. So let's try 8 again. So if I go 8 times 37, we already know the answer is 296 because we did it before. 6 and 4 is 10. 10 and 2 is 12. 24 is the answer. Okay, we're at the end of our whole number. So one answer is 868 with a remainder of 24. And if you're looking for a whole number answer, that's going to be it. Um, if I use a fraction, it would be 868 and 24 thirty-sevenths. Okay. And that would be your answer. I don't think you can reduce that. Okay. The other approach would be to Put a decimal, add a couple of zeros, put a decimal there, and keep going. However, if what you're looking for is a decimal answer here, uh, the real way to do this problem, the way any adult would do this if they were in a workplace or someplace where they needed to do this problem, they'd pull up a calculator and do it that way. So using a calculator is the way difficult division problems are actually handled almost all the time in the real world. Learning how to do long division is important for the pattern because in algebra you're going to use that pattern in another context where if you don't know this you're going to have to learn it at a later time and that's not good. It's good to at least understand how this is done. And doing simple problems is important because sometimes it's simpler to just scratch out an answer for a simple division problem than it is to go find a calculator. Okay, But when you get into messy uh, division problems, spending hours and hours and hours learning all of the estimation tricks and everything is probably not worth that much time and energy. That's my assessment. Your teacher may think differently, but if your teacher wants you to do difficult uh, divisors into big messy uh, problems like this, uh, they're going to have to spend a lot of time helping you estimate things like this. I learned to do big messy problems in junior high, uh, and I got reasonably good at it, I guess, but I always hated it because this is tedious, and there's a lot better things to do in math than doing long division. And so, take out your calculator and you get an answer is the way to do it if you have any choice in the matter, okay? If you don't, well, then learn to do it the way you need to do it. But that's my little message for the day. So how do we really do this problem? You take 3, 2, 1, 4, 0, 3, 2, 1, 4, 0, divided by 37 equals 868.6486. If I want to round off the answer, I would say 64, but the next digit is big. There is more than 5, 5 or more. And so I'd round that off to 65. So since that was a 4 followed by a number that's more than halfway up to 5, round it up to 5 instead of going down to the 4. So those are your variety of answers that uh, would solve this problem. You could get this answer by uh, doing a couple more steps of the long division and let it go with that. Okay, hopefully this meets your needs for learning how to do long division learning all the reasons for all the steps in this algorithm I don't think is worth the effort, especially at the stage where you're just learning to do it. 
this is one of those things where you have to just learn the pattern and uh, practice doing it enough times that you can do it fairly reliably.